On this National Nurses Day, our first guest has a lot of experience playing one on ER. You know her from that, from The Good Wife, and now her new memoir, Sunshine Girl, An Unexpected Life. Please say hello to Juliana Margulies. Hi, Juliana, how are you? Hi. Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good to see you, how's it going? Uh, it's going well on this National Nurses Day. Is it appropriate uh, for me to wish you a happy National Nurses Day? So here's the beauty of living in New York City, okay. and it, 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 it is appropriate, it, sort of, um, because <laughs> I did represent nurses, right? I true, mean, true. Um, and I was proud to do that. But anyway, I was walking home today, and I saw maybe 30 nurses dancing in the square uh, right now. <laughs> right at Greenwich Street and 7th Avenue and music blaring and they're filming it and they were doing this perfectly a great dance I guess they're filming it for some NBC show uh -huh. and uh they ended and everybody clapped and I thought it's National Nurses Day I played Nurse Hathaway and I did something I never ever in a million years dreamed I'd ever do I walked right into the middle of all of them and said, I'm Nurse Hathaway. <laughs> I was on ER, and I, I represented you people. And, of course, I didn't realize. Like, I had my mask on and a straw hat because it was sunny. And then I went, oh, wait, wait, I, I'm vaccinated. I've been double vaxxed. I'm, I'm vaccinated, and I took my mask off. And then they all just freaked out, and we started dancing and taking pictures, and they filmed it. And I just thought, you know, only in New York. That's pretty great, yeah. It was a great moment, That's I have to say. That's like when, uh, you remember George Reeves, who played Superman in his old age, would dress up as Superman and walk around, and then he, I think he jumped out the window or something like that. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I know, Guillermo, will you do a little fact check on that for me? Yeah, I, I will. Okay, I will. great, all right. I just wanted That's to see your that. butt again real quick. Oh, That's okay. If you would scamper off and pretend, yeah, there you go, okay, there. So, first of all, uh, congratulations on your book. I know that th this sort of thing is a lot of work and probably emotionally uh, draining. It's called Sunshine Girl, which was going to be the title of my autobiography, so I'm a little bit... <laughs> Why is it called Sunshine Girl? And do you remember what you were looking at in this photograph? Yes, I can answer both those questions, Jimmy. Okay. Um, it's called Sunshine Girl because that was the nickname my mother gave me uh, when I was born and stuck with me throughout my whole childhood. Um, and it's uh, both a blessing and a curse to be a <laughs> sunshine girl because you uh, grow up thinking you can only bring sunshine into a room and then you don't know your boundaries or... You don't know how to say no. Um, so it was both a blessing and a curse, and I talk a lot about, about that. Um, the picture, as a matter of fact, um, that was a while ago on a photo shoot I did with a photographer named Robert Trachtenberg, and it was a weekend up in uh, somewhere in San Francisco at some spa, and they had done all these pictures with hair, makeup, whatever, and at the end of the shoot... I went upstairs, took a shower, washed all the makeup off, and came downstairs in my own big baggy turtleneck and my hair slicked back like that with no makeup on. And he said, that's what I wanted. And so he and I, without anyone knowing, went out back and we took pictures of me with no makeup and no hair done. And um, that was one of the pictures that came out. And I think it's me saying, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that's a great shot. That's a great story, too. And the, this is also, this is really crazy. Speaking of famous photographers, one of the most famous photographers of all time, Helmut Newton, took this picture of you. This is before you were famous, and you were really, this is not like a set-up shot. You were really working as a, a waitress at a, uh, where were you a, a waiter in this shop? So I was a I was a waitress, and there's a whole uh, chapter in the book about it at a really in restaurant, a hot spot called 150 Worcester. And Helmut Newton was sitting at a table. He wasn't at my table actually. He was sitting at a table, and I had to walk past him. And I had these that those are grapefruit mousses, and with these cherries on top um, in martini glasses, and I had to hold them with my thumb so they wouldn't fall while I was walking through the, the restaurant. And he said, stop, stop. And I stopped and he goes, higher. And I put the martini glasses a little higher. He goes, great, hold on, click, click. And then I kept walking. And then a month later, it was in Condé Nast Traveler. And wow. it does look 
I mean, I see what he was doing now. You can see where they Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the, uh, you have an original print of this photograph? I have the original magazine it came in when I actually, um, uh, when he passed away and I was on ER at the time, I thought, oh my God, I should get a print of that photograph. I mean, that's, that's Helmut Newton and it's me. And so I called the estate and his wife, I guess, who is, owns the estate, um, she said, you can have it for $80,000. <laughs> so I said, that's okay, I have the magazine. <laughs> wow, how generous. <laughs> yeah, so I never bought it, but, you know, you have it there, it's big enough. When you're working as a waitress, did you have, besides Helmut Newton, famous people come in and... Every night. So where, where I was working, it literally was, for six months, the place where everyone went. So it was, on any given night, I mean, Prince... Uh, uh, Elizabeth Taylor came in, um, Princess Fergie was there. There was one night where I had a full table. It was Julia Roberts and Kiefer Sutherland. They had just finished doing, um, Flatliners. And Joel Schumacher, who just passed away, I think a year ago, um, was the director. And they came and there was 20 of them. And it, I was always in the VIP section because I'm anal retentive and they knew I could, would, um, take care of tables well. And it was a tough table. Um, oh, they kept really? getting up and moving their seats. There was a lot of booze at the table. Um, every time the food runner would come out with my numbered who gets the steak, who gets the fish, everyone, it was the wrong place. So it had been a rough night, um, and, and there were a lot of demands. And then I came out with all the desserts. I had five in each arm, and Hui, my food runner, had the other five, uh, ten behind me. And they all at that moment got up and left the restaurant. And I just remember standing there with all these desserts thinking, like, this can't be my life. <laughs> and Joel Schumacher <laughs> paid the bill. And um, we pooled our tips. The, the whole restaurant, we, all the waiters would pool their tips at the end of the night. Right. Um, and he, they, everybody left. And 10 minutes later, as I'm cleaning off the table, Joel Schumacher walked back in and handed me a hundred dollar bill. He had already tipped very well. And he said, I know you pull your tips. That table was really difficult and I'm sorry. And this is for you. Wow. And he gave me a hundred bucks. And wow. that meant, I mean, years later when he was directing Batman that yeah. George was on, yeah, George he would Poole. come to the ER set to talk to George about Batman and his <laughs> gorgeous outfit. <laughs> and um, and he and I would kibitz the whole time. I, I was like, Joel, you were the wonder like person that came in that actually really cared about us waitresses, and I really appreciated it. Wow, don't how about that? Like that well, you know? I, Julianne, I do want to ask you about George Clooney because it's his birthday today and uh, many other things. The book is called Sunshine Girl. Juliana Margulies is with us. We'll be right back. You know what I'm wondering? Because I think about this, this uh, that I remember things in a certain way, and then I will talk to other people in my family or whatever, and they don't remember things in that same way. How did you, do you have a great memory? Did you check with people? And were there any discrepancies as far as some of these childhood stories goes? Well, a, a lot of all of that. So um, one is um, when you have a lot of uh, drama in your life, you remember those things. You know, things stay with you um, when it's traumatic. Mm -hmm. But um, also, I also kept journals since I was nine years old. Uh, so I ha and I have them all. And oh, wow. um, because I was away from my father for so much of my um, year during the year, I only saw him twice a year. I, I wrote him letters and he had every single one of those letters and he had given them to me. So I had a lot to go on anyway, aside from memory. There was one memory that, you know, at, I remember things really vividly from five, six, but three is a little blurry. And we lived in Paris when I was three and my mother was quite eccentric and quite stunning. And she had a lot of boyfriends and, um, me and my sisters lived with her on the left bank and my father lived on the right bank at the time. And, um, I remembered a story. I wasn't quite sure if it was something that was real or had I dreamt it. So I did check in with both my older sisters to say, Hey guys, I remember in Paris when we all shared a room together that mom came home with a boyfriend and she, the boyfriend had a monkey 
And she opened the door and put the monkey in our room, shut the door, and then went to her room with the boyfriend. And I remember waking up with the monkey on my face. He was holding my face in his hands, and I started to scream. <laughs> and then he jumped onto Rachel's bed, and you started screaming. I was like, is that... And then, is that true? <laughs> and and <laughs> both my sister... <laughs> Email, I was in Toronto shooting a shooting the hot zone, and both of them emailed me back with different versions of the exact same story. <laughs> At which point I went, I'm writing my version. It obviously happened. I yeah. can only tell it from my perspective. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> and so <laughs> my mother to this day. Um, says that oh, girls that never happened. I never would have done that. But how can three daughters all completely? So I'm th- I'm three. My middle sister's six. My older sister's nine. How can we all remember the same story and it not be true? So yes, there was a monkey in our room. Maybe my mother's boyfriend was an organ grinder, or I don't know why he had a monkey. Well, it sounds like maybe he was. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Wow, that is crazy. That, even just the idea that your mom would go home with a guy who had a monkey is unbelievable. Yeah, there were, there's a couple stories like that, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the way, yeah. I just have to say this. I, I have had my mother's complete blessing to write this book. Yeah, and, and, and the monkeys too, good. I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but she she actually she's read it. She gave me her blessing, and oh, and and after she read it, she said, "I love you, and I'm so sorry." George Clooney, your old pal, turned sixty years old today. Did you contact him? Did you send him anything? I did. Um, well, I I wanted to write. I I wrote to him yesterday because I I wanted to write to him on the last day of his fifties. Ah. I thought it would be fun to say, dear. Well, I, I, I call him Doug, and he calls me Carol. It's oh. just something we've always done. Um, and I said, on this, your last day of being 50, I just want you to know that when you're 90 and you look back and see how young 60 was, you will curse the day you wasted time thinking you're getting older or that you're too old. So, um, and also, what's your address? I want to send you my book. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so today I sent him, I sent him the book because um, I, I have to give credit where credit is due. And George, um, I give him tremendous credit for helping launch my career because he happened to make a phone call and went out of his way to tell me not to take another job um, because he thought they might keep me as a series regular. And because of that phone call, wow. I ended up on ER. Wow. Well, happy birthday, George Clooney. And thanks for being with us, Juliana. This is the book. It's Juliana Margulies, A Sunshine Girl, An Unexpected Life. It is out now. Thank you very much for being with us. We'll be back with Daniel Day Kim. Thanks for watching. Remember, every time you click the subscribe button, one of your enemies gets destroyed.